suggest to you tonight that life is too short to be consumed with worry. No matter what problems we face in life, we have a God that is bigger than our problems. I've said it before and I'll say it again. It is essential for us in this season to stop telling God about our big problems and start telling our problems about a big God. And in case you have forgotten the subject matter, uh, that God is a God that has all things under control. And if we know that God is a God that have all things under control, we ought to use spiritual authority that amazes the enemy. Uh, I'm, 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 every now and then I get to a place in my life where I believe that I'm amazing the devil who thought he had me. I'm amazing the devil who thought because he hurt me and made me cry that it was over. I'm amazing my enemies, the ones who saw me go into the fire and took pleasure in it. Uh, the ones who said I would never make it. The ones who said I would burn up in the fire. The ones who said that circumstances would kill me. The ones who said I would die because of what I was going through. The ones who said that I would lose my mind. Sometimes you have to reverse the notion of what the enemy has placed over your life and amaze him and let, me, let him know that if God is in control of my situation, he is able to bring me out. We find here in the text, we find the text that Israel is assured that God has not cast them off and promised the comfort of the divine presence during the assisting tribulation. And as a nation, they have gone through some perilous times. And now God's give, God gives them a ray of hope. And uh, let me mock time momentarily and suggest that even in the midst of our storms, we have a ray of hope in Jesus because he promised never to leave us. And although this text applies to the children of Israel of yesteryear, it carries uh, contemporary practicalities that we are the creative handiwork of God. And as a child of God, our Father lets us know that there is no need to fear. And as I roll back the tablets of my mind and share with you that as a child, I did not fear anyone when my father or my mother was around. Why? Because uh, daddy and mama was my protection. And I was their son, and, and they weren't going to let anything or anyone harm their son. And there's no need for us to fear because uh, God is able to step into a midst of our situation. Let us know that just like your natural parents, I'm your dad. And whenever you call me, I'm able to rescue you. Uh, the text says that we have been redeemed. The text says we have been redeemed. We have been bought with a price that we could not pay. But the text demonstrates that God saw and sees something valuable in that he claims us for himself. What does he see in us? He sees his son in us. The text says that he calls us by our name, which suggests a relationship with him. And, 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 and I don't know about you, but I like a God that knows my name. Uh, he, he does not know it casually. He knows it intimately. He, he's, he, he is knowing our name means that he has it recorded somewhere and that somewhere it is in the book of life. I, it, it really doesn't matter to me, Deacon Hunt, in this season of who else know my name, but as long as God knows my name. It really doesn't matter who thinks what they think about me as long as I'm secure in my relationship. And what I have found out, Pastor Jones, even in the church, people have been pulled away from a relationship with God because of what other people perceive them be. But how many here can testify tonight that it really doesn't matter what you say about me? It really doesn't matter what you think about me because I know who I am in God. says that he knows our name. And not only does he call us by our name, but we belong to him. We are in his possession. We are his property. And we are his prize. That is why we have no need to worry because God is in control. Uh, then he begins to talk about tribulations. He says 
uh, that trials and tribulations are certain to come my way. Uh, that is one thing that is certain in life, that you will go through some trials and tribulation. Jesus says over in John, the 16th chapter, in the 33rd verse, he says, In this world ye shall have tribulations. But he says, Be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Uh, troubled water is a natural path that we must accept. And Mark teaches us that when Jesus and the disciples were out on the water and the water got rough, Jesus rebuked the wind and told the sea to be still. Uh, Jesus is still rebuking the winds in our lives and telling the sea to be still in our lives. It is the natural design of the waters to be turbulent from time to time. And every now and then, our lives are tested by fire. We will go through the fire, but the same God that hung the sun in the moon, the same God that put the wetness in the rain, the same God that put the twinkles in the star, can take the heat and the hurt out of the fire and bring us through. We find over in Psalms 46.1, it teaches us that God is our refuge. And our strength, he is a very present help in the time of trouble. And so since he is our refuge, I can find protection in him. And since he is our strength, I can turn my problems over to him. And since he is a present help, I don't have to wait for him to come because he's already there. How, how many here have ever been in a place where you called on God and it didn't seem like God was coming, but just when you turned around, God showed up in the midst of your problems, began uh, to let you know that I haven't left. The reality, the fact is I've been here all the time. You just looked other places to find comfort. You were looking at man to find shift. You were looking from accolades from people, but God said I was here all the time. All I was waiting for you is to return back to your is there anybody here that can testify that when I forgot about everything else and returned back to God, God began to strengthen me. He began to revive me. He began to restore me. He began to put me back in my rightful place. So it really doesn't matter what circumstances are around me. When I return back to God, he lets me know that I never left. He says uh, that somebody... In the house may be going through some difficult times right now. But he lets us know that don't worry about it. But he says in the text, he says in the second verse, he says, when thou passest through the waters. He says, I will be with thee. He says, and when you go through the rivers. He says, they will not overflow thee. And he says, and when thou walkest through the fire. He says, thou shalt not be burned. He says, neither shall the kind flame kindle thee. And so God is letting us know, he says, it's no matter what you go through in your life. When you understand that there is a divine connection between what you go through and who I am, then you will understand that you can walk through whatever valley is in your life with your head hung high. You can go through the storms of life knowing that God is able to bring you through. And somebody in the house saying, well, preacher, you don't know what I've been through in my life. Somebody has illness in their life and in their loved one's life. Uh, but God is saying, don't worry about it because in the midst of what you're going through, something good is about to come out of it. And somebody said, I'm worried about my bills. Uh, but God said, you don't have to worry about that because I'm still Jehovah Jireh. I'm still able to provide for you. Uh, and somebody said, I tossed and turned all night long. Uh, and no matter how high the mountain is or no matter how low the valley may be, uh, I dare somebody to touch your neighbor and say, God is still in control. Uh, and so God sent me here tonight to say a simple message that some of you are going through the most traumatic situations in your life and it feels like every time you turn around there's one thing after another but God say if you're able to suffer through this if you can keep on 
praying through this. Uh, if you can go through this with your head up. Uh, if you can go through this and still give me the praise. Uh, God said I came by to let you know uh, that something good is coming out of this. Uh, and you may not be able to see it right now. Uh, it may not look like there is light at the end of a tunnel. Uh, it may look like your trials are increasing uh, and your faith is decreasing. Uh, but God sent me here tonight to let somebody know uh, that if you learn how to hold on uh, and if you learn how to hold out uh, God saying I'm able to change uh, your problems into productivity uh, I'm able to turn it around uh, and make it work for your good uh, and I don't know who I'm talking to tonight uh, but somebody been through a struggle just on this week uh, but God told me to declare to you uh, that something good uh, is going to come out of this uh, you may be sick uh, but healing is on the way uh, you may be broke uh, but God said I'm going to turn it around uh, you may be crying uh, but God said joy is about to come uh, and it reminds me of a story uh, that the Bible talks about three Hebrew boys uh, y'all know the story uh, Shadrach, Meshach uh, or the old preacher used to say a bad negro uh, were in the fiery furnace uh, y'all know the story the Bible says uh, that the king took a pit them in the furnace uh, because they would not bow down uh, and the king uh, kept putting them in the furnace uh, when they got into the furnace uh, they were not consumed uh, and so the king told them uh, to turn the heat up uh, seven times hotter uh, what are you trying to tell us preacher uh, that if the devil is not messing with you uh, it means you ain't going nowhere uh, and the reason the enemy uh, is on your back uh, is because he sees potential in you uh, he sees destiny inside of you uh, I cannot I take it back. He see purpose uh, on the inside of you. Uh, if you ain't going through a trial, uh, you ain't doing nothing. Uh, somebody touch your neighbor. Uh, say the reason I'm going through uh, what I'm going through uh, is because the devil uh, is scared of my next place. Uh, the devil is afraid uh, that I'm about to pray uh, until strongholds come down. Uh, the devil is scared uh, that I'm a worship soul uh, until my family get saved, uh, until my wife gets saved, uh, until my husband come back to God. Uh, and so you know the text is said uh, that when he looked in, uh, they see I can't see, I don't see just three folks walking around, uh, but I see four, uh, and it must be uh, the Son of God. Uh, what are you trying to say, preacher, uh, that when you walk through the fire, uh, God said, I'll sneak up right beside you. Uh, I'll wrap my arms around you uh, and let you know you're not walking uh, by yourself. Uh, do I have a witness in the house uh, that can testify uh, that I'm not in this thing uh, by myself? Uh, I ain't coming to church uh, just to come to church, uh, but I praise him uh, because something good uh, is coming out of this. Uh, I worship uh, because something good uh, is coming out of this. Uh, if you see me lift my hand uh, it's because something good uh, is coming out of this. Uh, somebody tell the devil, uh, take your best shot. Uh, but when I get back up, I'm going to give God uh, what belongs to him. Uh, you try to make me lose my mind. Uh, but something good uh, is coming out of this. Uh, because the Bible say uh, that thou will uh, keep me uh, in perfect peace. Uh, if I keep my mind uh, stayed on him, uh, I dare you uh, to slap your neighbor uh, and tell him to hold on. Uh, keep going through. Uh, keep praising your way through. Uh, because something uh, good uh, is coming uh, out of this. Uh, say yes. Uh, say yes. Uh, say yes. Uh, say yes.